pediatric cancer research in many ways has played a leading role in the history of cancer research. Um, many of the early discoveries of how chemotherapy can work to cure cancer were first seen in, in, in children with cancer. Some of the, the, the best stories in the history of medicine are taking diseases like acute lymphoblastic leukemia, with a 0% cure, chance of cure in the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, to a now 90% chance of cure. And that's just tremendous success. I don't remember. No, Elizabeth doesn't remember because she was only um, two actually, when we found out it was right before Christmas. Elizabeth was diagnosed with stage two high-risk neuroblastoma with amplified NMEC. We thought everything was good because they'd done all the preliminary scans and nothing had shown up as metastatic and we thought everything was clear and it was fully resectable, but there was neuroblastoma in one of the four lymph nodes that they removed and it was, had the amplified NMEC. five, six, seven years ago, we really didn't know the answer to the question, why do some patients get neuroblastoma? But through um, a fairly detailed um, analysis of both the constitutional, or the, 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 the germline host DNA of patients, uh, as well as the tumor DNA, we've learned a lot uh, recently and have discovered multiple genes that are either mutated or influence the development of neuroblastoma. Um, and that has revolutionized our ability to understand which genes and which pathways in cancer cells are really driving the cancer and are therefore potentially targetable therapeutically. She needs to be treated like it's high-risk neuroblastoma. She needs the full um, induction chemotherapy. So she had like six rounds of chemotherapy. And then she had um, the stem cell transplants. So she had that. She had the radiation afterwards. We did the whatever it was, several months on um, Accutane. And everything was geared up, and, and we, were on, we were getting ready to enroll her in the clinical trial with the um, immunotherapy. Neuroblastomas have this ability to evade the immune system like many solid cancers, and the mechanism of that became very well known, but it also became very well known that there is a, a, an antigen or a, a protein on the cell surface of neuroblastomas called GD2 um, that is very high on most neuroblastoma cells, very low on most normal cells in the body, and that could be a, uh, an immunotherapeutic target. So the children's oncology group ran a pivotal study um, where we combined uh, an immunotherapeutic approach taking advantage of this excessive expression of GD2 on neuroblastoma and showed that that approach provided after children had received chemotherapy and radiation therapy, so when they were in their first remission, using immunotherapy in that situation improved survival 20%. And that, that is about as much of a home run as you can expect in a large randomized phase three clinical trial. When they did the baseline studies, some neuroblastoma showed up in her bone marrow and it had never been there before. And so that kicked her out of the study. At that point, we were just lost. We know that over half of children who achieve a remission will ultimately suffer a relapse and that relapse is not generally curable. He contacted the National Institute of Cancer and the National Institute of Health and actually got um, the, the clinical trial immunotherapy drug released under compassionate release so that Elizabeth could take it not on the trial. I believe absolutely that, that she is here today and we are able to live our lives because of cancer research and that it, it saved her life that overnight changed um, the way that we approach the disease and, and has led to the implementation of immunotherapy as now a standard way to treat neuroblastoma to improve survival by preventing relapse. Mm -hmm.